friends hello hi how are you i hope you guys are having a fantastic day today i'm doing <clears throat> i'm pretty tired um i'm actually just like exhausted i don't know why i'm just really tired today but um anyway today we're okay so we're doing something new it's not like that new I understand I'm gonna get ready with me while I do this because uh, I just like getting ready while I talk it helps me focus on things but I wanted to try something new on my channel you guys seem to really enjoy um, my commentary videos they're some of my most viewed videos on my channel and so I kind of thought that maybe every Friday we could do kind of a weekly roundup if there's things to talk about, I'm not going to talk about like BS just so I have a video to put out. Seems like usually by a week's time there's something new that I can give my thoughts on. And sometimes it might be a situation where I'm like, honestly, I have no thoughts. I think this is stupid. And then other times that's something I feel very passionately about. The reason I wanted to try this kind of format out, doing like a weekly update sort of situation, is because I feel like during the week a lot of like little things happen. Sometimes a lot of like littler dramas, I don't know if that's a word, we'll see um, in the comments. I feel like sometimes a lot of small stuff happens and you guys want my opinion but I'm kind of like I don't really want to make a whole video on this or I don't really want to like because I don't want my chance and sometimes things happen so quickly in a row that I'm like well I don't want to make a video on every single one because I don't want to just have eight videos in a row that are like drama videos. So I kind of think I might do something like this where every week you can expect to for the people that like my thoughts on things every week you could kind of expect to be getting my thoughts on things uh every friday so that's kind of what we're going to try to do i, I want to see if it works if you guys absolutely hate this idea and you want it like right when it happens i also think this will give me more time to let situations play out because a lot of times there's that pressure when you're a channel to like get a video out really quickly um because like 20 other videos are getting made so i think doing it in this format where you guys can just expect to have a video on Friday um, is something that I'm interested in doing and want to do. So if you guys like this idea, let me know. And if you don't, let me know, because I'm just kind of trying it out. I still haven't thought of a witty name for it. Uh, maybe like, I have no idea. I'll think of it later. Um, so today's video, there's a couple of bigger things that happened that I definitely would love to discuss and talk about with you guys. There's actually been, weirdly enough, there's been a ton of almost like I call it drama channel drama. Weirdly enough, it's not really anyone's fault except like the people that aren't the drama channels. It's funny. Well, I guess Keemstar could be considered a drama channel. But basically, the biggest drama channel around, T-Spell, who, who doesn't freaking love her, like, or him. I think it's a girl though, I'm pretty sure. Um, she's fantastic. Makes amazing, really good content. Every time I watch one of her videos, I have that exposed song stuck on my head like all day um because it's just really good like her videos are funny they're informative they're to the point she gives her own some of her own opinion if you haven't checked her out you definitely should i really like t-spell however a few things have happened with her this week that are really unfair to her to be perfectly honest so the first big thing that happened was keemstar tweeted out who i don't like keemstar and i try not to talk about him because i made a video about him once and it just ended up getting me like a lot of hate and i just was like he's not worth it because he's never good my big thing this week has been and the reason I haven't wanted to make videos on particular topics is because I'm like I don't think these people are going to change uh, the people that I'm going to talk about today but I still want to keep you guys informed and give you guys my opinions um, so that's what I'm doing. Keemstar who is basically just like a little gnome I like to call him who's like he has his own drama show called Drama Alert where he talks about Jake Paul mostly for views um, <laughs> And he's kind of trash, but he tweeted out a picture of Erica Costell, who is Jake Paul's ex-girlfriend, and he said, the next Eugenia Cooney. If you don't know who Eugenia Cooney is, it's really sad, actually. So people think Eugenia Cooney is a YouTuber on this platform, and normally I don't like to diagnose YouTubers or because we don't know them in their real lives and we don't know what's going on and what's for the camera and what's not but she has lost an extreme she always has been really skinny but she lost like an extreme amount of weight recently making her um like it it's hard because I 
I know when you're struggling with your body it's like hard to see yourself any other way but like she is very 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 skinny um, to a point where it doesn't look like she is being healthy with her body um, you can look up like pictures and there's a whole bunch of videos talking about her but he basically posted this picture of Erica Costell where she looked very skinny said the next Chica Chica Cooney um, people were rightfully offended by this and rightfully kind of pissed off because it seemed like he was poking fun at somebody having an eating disorder um, because that's what we've kind of figured out based on that and people I haven't seen people really talk about this, but Keemstar himself has gotten in Twitter fights with, like, Eugenia Cooney <laughs> and has been, like, saying crap about her online for a long time. Like, this is not the first time that he's brought her up on his Twitter. He always consistently talks crap about her and all of this stuff. So, people were pretty pissed off about this and they were kind of like, this is really rude. You know, you're calling one woman unhealthy looking because that's what it, that's what it means when you say that. Like, I know he tried to twist it another way and like, he's a whatever. He's like such a gaslighter, but that's kind of what that means. So, T Spell retweeted it and basically was like, you have a daughter who's like nine years old and this is the type of stuff you're just gonna put down women on the internet for absolutely no reason. Like, think about that for a second. And I actually agreed with her. Like, what if some like 30, I don't know how old he is, I think he's almost 40. What if some almost 40 year old man freaking called your daughter that on the internet? Like, what would you do about that? Like, would you, you would be rightfully incredibly angry. I think people who have children, I almost expect more from them when they're making fun of these kids because I'm like, like, how can you look your daughter in the face and then turn around and tell this woman that she looks sickly because she's skinny? Like, it doesn't make sense to me. So T. Spell was right. So then Keemstar makes this whole video just like gaslight, like, don't you dare talk about my children and all of this, like, pr it was honestly propaganda because it was so, he was trying to like make the situation seem like something that so wasn't. He never talked crap about his kids. And believe me, if she did, like, we would all be pissed at her about that. Like, people have morals. People know that you're not supposed to trash talk children. She still has her tweet up. Like, it's very well documented what actually happened and that he is just trying to gaslight this whole situation. t to her credit, like, took it like a champ because she's just, she is unbothered, um, <laughs> which I love. But she basically was like, this is a lie, like, whatever. And everything kind of died down. Um, and then this is where it kind of gets weird. So then later this week, t got involved with something else that, again, really Really wasn't her fault. She really didn't do anything wrong. She actually didn't do anything wrong at all. Um, Manny MUA copyright struck her entire video about his review of the Morphe Fluidity Foundation and then struck all of it. It was all gone. All the whole video got taken down. It's it's wrong for so many reasons, um, but I'm gonna break down my main reasons for why this is wrong. First of all, he copyright struck the entire video, um, which is wrong because he was only in, I think she, she did the math, and he was only in about three to four minutes of a 14 minute video total of like his clips. So copywriting the entire video means that he is claiming to own the her intro, her outro, her title screens with her opinions on it. He's claiming to own all of that and that's just not the tea. I explained the whole false copyright thing before on my channel when the whole Petty Page and Jackie Ina situation happened but basically under fair use you are allowed to use somebody else's video as long as it's kind of you're using it for either commentary purposes so it's not like just a re upload of an entire video. So if she had just re-uploaded his entire review, that would be grounds for copyright with nothing interjected about him. That's a copyright, okay? So that would be illegal, what she did. If she had done that, she didn't do that. If she had uploaded it, and I think there's a couple other things that can happen where it could be considered copyright claim. Like compilation videos can sometimes fall under not fair use because um, they're not necessarily like adding anything to the clip. They're just again re-uploading it. It's basically if you re-upload somebody else's work, that would be copywriting and that would be grounds for a strike and a copyright strike and all of that stuff. t Spill didn't do any of those things. Her video was literally included some clips from his video where she used it for commentary purposes, which means that her video falls under fair use, which means copyright striking it is incorrect. That's not the correct move. A lot of these influencers, for some reason, think you can just, if you don't like a video about yourself, that means it falls under <laughs> fair use and like you can copyright strike it. And that's just not the tea. Like that's just not the case at all. You can't just copyright strike someone because what that does is I'm pretty, I've never been copyright striked because I'm terrified of it and I don't use other people's clips in my videos very rarely. However, from people that I know that have gotten copyright striked, 
I don't think you make any of the money that you would have made from that video. I'm pretty sure you don't. The video usually gets taken down immediately by YouTube without anyone even reviewing it because that's the other problem too is YouTube's system is screwed up. Like the fact that people can actually do this and get away with it is what's more screwed up to me in this situation and that's a whole YouTube problem because the fact that Mandy MUA could strike that as copyright and not a single person reviewed it because YouTube had to cover their, themselves basically and if this happened like they need to cover what protect themselves first and then deal with it later um so the video is taken down now she's losing out on potential views because it's a hot topic right now Manny knows that by the time the video could even get back up I don't know how many views it would actually get he basically screwed her on this video and there's going to be no repercussions for Manny I saw some people saying that YouTube has changed their policy where false copyright strikes if you are proven to have falsely copyright struck someone your channel can get a strike I don't think that's actually the case I don't believe so because I think if that were the case we wouldn't have issues like this basically the other thing that's been bothering me too is Manny is staying really silent about this he has time to post about like going to the gym and like being positive uh, but he hasn't responded to anyone asking him what's going on with the tea spell thing and I think that's really annoying because I think he genuinely thinks he's just gonna be able to like get away with this because other influencers have gotten away with stuff similarly before and the problem is for tea spell she now has a strike on her channel um which is really bad it's it's really bad especially when it's undeserved it really sucks um because that can it first of all it causes issues with your channel getting pushed like monetization can be affected um a whole bunch of bad things can happen because you got a strike on your channel um and it also leaves her really vulnerable because if people were trying to like be terrible they could add more strikes and try to get a channel deleted and that's an issue when she's done nothing wrong to deserve that when she's just doing her job which is making videos about other people and using clips under fair use she's literally done nothing wrong in this situation like nothing and I know people are like I've seen this whole thing on Twitter of people being like well this is just what you get when you make a ton of videos about somebody like of course they're gonna fight back what Manny's doing is illegal this isn't just like fighting back he's he's doing something that's illegal he's doing Doing something that's wrong you can't just false copyright claim somebody because you don't like what they say about you that's not how copyright laws work we have this thing called freedom of speech in America where you are allowed to make videos she could have made every she could be an I hate Manny MUA channel and she could upload the same videos that she's uploaded about him and she could upload a hundred more and you know what she's allowed to do that if she was commenting a million times on his videos he wanted to block her from the channel or that's his channel that's his space he's totally allowed to do that but to invade somebody else's space and to try to take things off somebody else's space that's where the problem lies for me I think that's really 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 messed up and personally I think even if you don't like drama channels because I know everybody's like well I don't even like drama channels even if you don't like drama channels you have to admit that doing something like this taking away somebody's livelihood because you just didn't like what they said about you is wrong so there's somewhat of a conspiracy theory going around and I actually I don't know how much I believe it <laughs> I don't like to think that people would do things like this, but I thought this was interesting and I wanted to bring it up to get your guys' opinions on why this is happening. Because the way I see it is like, why would Manny do this? Like, what is his end game by doing this? Because these are false copyright claims. Challenging them will almost inevitably, because sometimes YouTube still screws people, but will almost inevitably bring the video back and like, it'll just make people not be able to see it for this amount of time, which is like, annoying but whatever but something that was interesting that was brought to my attention was in Keemstar's video where he like blast his Twitter video where he blasted T spill for talking about his daughter even though she never talked about his daughter and all of that stuff the thing we talked about before in that video he was like drop your real identity which first of all why would she do why would anybody drop their real identity on the internet there's a freaking reason that she obviously does not want her identity to be known why can people not just respect that why is there all this mystery surrounding her like let this girl live she's got five it's obviously working for her it's not like it's affecting her channel she's got like what 500,000 subscribers like she's doing fine let her live I don't understand the need for people to be like oh well we must know your identity it's like I don't blame some people have jobs that they don't want to jeopardize like some people have a life outside of this YouTube thing. If YouTube ever died, Keemstar would be so screwed because he's made himself look like such a dick. He could never get a real job. I digress. But now there's a conspiracy going around that the re- because if you get copyright struck, you have to give your full name, your full address. You basically have to dox yourself, which was the reason Jackie Ina gave for thinking that Petty Page uh, hacked into her account, which wasn't true. However, people are wondering if this was all a ploy 
to be able to get all of T-Spill's information. I don't necessarily believe that. I don't think Manny and Keemstar are just like in a group chat talking about all of this. Um, I don't know if I believe all of that. However, I do have to wonder what the end game is. Like I wonder if it's to send a message. Although I think if it was to send a message, it's really backfiring because all of us are making videos now. <laughs> like the whole drama, even me, I'm like a sub drama community. Like all of us are pretty much making videos to defend her because this is wrong. It's not right to take someone's work and claim it as something that's yours. Whether you like or agree with drama channels or not, them using clips is totally within their rights under the law. Um, and if you have a problem with the law, take that up with your legislators, but don't break the law and falsely accuse someone of something they did not do. That's all I have to say about that. I really feel for her and I'm hoping that the process to get the video put back up is kind of expedited. I know the second it goes back up I'm gonna watch it to give her a couple more views um, and make up for the fact that she's just kind of gotten screwed in this situation. And if you guys are supporters of T-Still that's also what I would recommend you do because it's really the only thing we can do as viewers. Uh, there was another thing that happened this week that I again was like should I make a video and then I was like mm, I don't know. Um. The problem with this topic is it is politically charged, but I've decided I'm going to talk about it anyway. Um, a video of Trisha Paytas about two years ago of her discussing um, immigration in, her, in America and her discussing that she supports Donald Trump and building a wall um, resurfaced this week that is like I think about two years old and she's made an apology video. She's explicitly stated she, not even that she doesn't support Trump, she doesn't care about politics and she's never voted and it was like this whole thing. And then video she talked about how illegal immigrants um it was just bad I don't even want to repeat it because it was honestly just it was wrong she wasn't correct about what she was saying there are certain things in politics that I feel like people because this is why I don't really want to talk about politics I want to talk about why I'm kind of over Trisha Paytas at this point there are a lot of things in politics that are like matters of opinion where it's like well maybe we just disagree on how things should be um, the wall that Trump is trying to build is a perfect example. Some people really truly believe that it's going to help and some people really truly believe that it's a waste of money. Um, I'm not going to say where I stand but if you watch my channel a lot you probably know um, but that's a matter of opinion like people are allowed to have the differing opinions on where they are. Some opinions um, have more facts to back them up than others but people are still allowed to think what they want to think when it comes to that stuff. My problem is when people misinterpret facts and then say things like well this is just my opinion on the situation um, or when people blatantly don't care about the facts and then state facts like they're an opinion. That's not how that works. And the reason I have such a problem with what Trisha Paytas did, even though it was two years ago, and I know that people are like, oh, well, she was a troll. She was a troll for a long time. This is how she, this is what she used to do on her channel. She used to just troll and all of that stuff. Even if you're trolling, there are people who don't know that you're trolling. When you're saying things like that, which is what people actually think, because some people actually think the things that she said. Some people truly believe, even though there's no basis in fact for them to believe that. Some people truly believe the things that she said. So to spread that like it's truth to millions and millions of people because she I don't know how many followers she had two years ago but I know it was over a million. So to spread that to over a million people to say this is how I feel and this is what I think especially some of those people being younger people who in that instance because when this was when Trump had like I think it was when he just got to be the Republican nominee or whatever to spread that type of misinformation and that type of propaganda because that's what it was it was it was lies none of those things were what she said in that clip were real. I didn't watch the entire video because I'm pretty sure she deleted it. It wasn't correct, it wasn't based in fact, and it was a stupid thing to post on the internet. Um, my bigger problem is with her like apology. So I, I went into this whole situation, the second I saw that video, I was like, I'm not even surprised because it's Trisha Paytas. I don't, expe I don't expect a lot from her because she's proven time and time again on her YouTube channel by saying racist things, by saying uh, xenophobic things, by saying stupid, ignorant things that she just doesn't really care. Um, and that's basically what she said in her apology video, so I was right about that. Um, she just doesn't care, so I didn't really want to bring attention to her because I felt like that's what she wanted. I feel like she wanted attention, that's what you do when you troll, and it's not even her just like 
the funny part about it is like normally when this stuff happens and people are like well they just want attention it's like well, you never really know that but in this case she literally said I just wanted attention I just want views so I made a stupid post I have a problem with her apology too because and again I don't really expect a lot from Trisha but I really truly felt like the message of her apology video was if you're stupid on the internet you'll get views because that's more what she talked about than anything else she didn't even really talk about she like grazed over the people she might have hurt and how difficult how like hard it is to you know how bad it was to give that type of information and how she like grazed over all of that but her biggest topic that she talked about was how being dumb on the internet really got her to where she is today i don't know if i'd be that bothered by that if i didn't know that young women look up to trisha paytas and like see her as somewhat of an icon like i don't think i would care if it was just whatever if it was like grown adults or whatever but i know that a lot of young women look up to her and think she is like the epitome of fame because she goes on these lavish shopping sprees and what i mean whatever you do with your money is whatever but in a world where a lot of kids are trying to become YouTube celebrities. Not that I was ever in support of Trisha Paytas, but I really cannot, I really cannot get behind telling young girls that the way to success is to be acting like an idiot and to be uninformed and to just not care about anything going on in the world around you. I can't get behind that. Not to get all social justice warrior-y on you guys, but for her to just sit there and claim like, oh, well, I couldn't have possibly cared about politics because I've never even voted. And to like promote that type of lifestyle and promote those types of things to young women especially, it's like, this bothers me. Like, I don't really know why because at the end of the day, she's a grown adult and her most of her audience, I'm pretty sure, are mostly adults. Um, I don't think she has a ton of children following her because I don't think she does. But either way, I know that I know personally a few young women who are like ending high school or beginning college, that type of age, who watch her and want to be like her. And instead of taking that voice, and I guess I just can't expect everybody to do everything. And I don't know what I expected from Trisha, I guess. I don't know why I'm even like rambling about this, but I think it just bothers me that like p there are people out there that don't even care that they have a platform where they could invoke some type of change. Not even change politically, but could t encourage women to be like, that apology would have been so much better if she was just like, I was really silly for thinking that, you know, I had to act stupid to get views. She was like, but she was talking about how what much it profited her, all the, all the TV shows she got to go on, all the things she got to do. She acted like an idiot on the internet. Instead of her apology being like a self-realization moment of like, I never had to do those things. I never had to act stupid to get views. It was like, I, I should have never done those things because she just talked about it, the profit of it. And that really, I don't know. I feel like currently we are really in some pivotal moments in history where I think things are either going to change or they're going to kind of regress and we're going to regress in the social justice issues, all of that. And I think people like Trisha Paytas are not helping us to progress. I think they're helping us to regress. And I just kind of take issue with that. And I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh, Trisha Paytas is canceled. She's canceled. Cause like, she's probably gonna be just fine. Like she was, the, the people that are subscribed probably knew about those videos and just didn't care. Like she's gonna be fine. But I know for me personally, I'm pretty much just going to stop supporting her. I not that I ever was a huge supporter even, more of that I would like watch an odd video here and there. If she had something that looked interesting, I would watch it. And I'm not gonna do that anymore. And if you care about all the things that she claims to not care about, I would recommend you not doing it either. You're not watching her if you did. Um, that's kind of where I'm at with that. That's kind of my opinion on the Trisha Payton. I'm like, I'm still disheartened, but I'm like not surprised, if that makes sense, to just sum that all up. like. I'm, I'm like, you know, I wish it was different with her, but I'm not like shook that she said something stupid. I'm gonna try out this Ofra lipstick. I got it in a boxy charm. All right, well, that was kind of my roundup for the week. Um, I hope you guys liked this video. Let me know if you wanna see more kind of my thoughts style weekly update type situations. I really think this could be a cool concept. And then you guys are getting sort of the drama videos that you like at least once a week. I love you guys so much. If you like this video, please like and subscribe or just like or just subscribe or do neither. I'm honestly just so happy you're watching me. Thank you for being here. I love you guys so, so much. I really appreciate you just being here and watching me. Um, my merch, my social media, everything I have on my face and a ton of other fun stuff will be listed down below. And yeah, I love you guys so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!